Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Alex and today we're going to unbox my latest purchase. Let's go. All right, so let's unbox this one. And guys, this outer box, remember if you want uh, the Panderisti guys to consider this a full set, this sh should always be with you, okay? If that's important to you, that's a complete set. This one is important. So let's see what we have here. So black box inside. All right, all right, all right. Starting to get closer. Uh, uh, wait, let's take this one out first. All right, so here we have the warranty card, I presume. Yes. Great. This one should stay here. Let's do like that. And let's get to the good part. All right, so here we go. Here we have additional strap, here we have the watch, and here we have the tools, all right? And the watch, let's cut to the chase. Panerai Submersible Reference 683. All right, so here it is, the 683 42 millimeter Panerai Submersible. You can see how it fits on my 16.5 centimeter wrist. The Panerai Submersible 683. All right, so there we go. There's the unboxing of my latest purchase, the Panerai Submersible 683. Feels good, I have to say, to be back in the Panerai business. Um, it was a couple of years ago since I last had one and I have had a few in the past, always with a few years in between. The latest one was back in uh, 2018. I had the 590, which is a 44 millimeter Luminor with the eight days of uh, power reserve. Prior to that, I actually had the predecessor of the 683, which is the 682. More or less the same watch as this one with a few small tweaks. We'll get into that shortly. The reason, let's start there, why I bought this Panerai is because the, the few watches I have in my collection um, are either on a leather strap or vintage pieces that are a bit more fragile and not maybe suited that well for water activities and with the summer time and vacation times ahead I felt the need of a watch that is more robust that has uh, more water resistance than my other pieces and I felt it was time to get back into the Panerais uh, since I'm a fan of the 42 millimeter submersible. So that's why I bought this one. Let's go through the specs of the Panerai submersible 6A3 quickly. 42 millimeter case. You have a bezel insert in ceramic. You have the trademark uh, Panerai crown guards and that you operate like this to be able to adjust the time. Movement is a OPXXXIV, which is a Richemont movement and that has 72 hours of power serve. Nothing too fancy, but a good workhorse. And this movement is actually used by many of the brands that are under the Richemont umbrella. 51 millimeter from lug to lug, 13.2 millimeters in thickness and if you have a smaller wrist like mine, uh, that is 16.5 centimeters, uh, this, the 42 millimeter submersible still wears pretty well on the wrist. And you have to consider that it is a Panerai. It's supposed to be big. They are usually, you know, 44, 47 millimeters. But these ones, when they were introduced back in 2016, it really caught my attention. And I remember that the 682 that I had in the past was a watch that I enjoyed much more than I thought I would. So it feels good to, you know, have tried it in the past before pulling the trigger on this one. So the difference between the 682 and the 683, uh, let's start with the first obvious tell is that the 683 has a ceramic insert in the bezel, 
while the 682 is fully in steel. We have the submersible text in blue, you have the second sand in blue, and you have the 300 meters slash 1000 feet in blue, while at the 682 everything is in white. Uh, I prefer actually the fully white text uh, on the 682, but I do prefer the ceramic insert on the 683. Other than that, case dimensions are the same, 42 millimeter. Thickness is though uh, something that is different. Um, on the 683, it's 13.2 millimeter, which I prefer compared to the 14.3 millimeter thickness in the 6A2. So this one is slimmer, which I like. The reason for that is because in the 6A2, they had the in-house movement and they had both open and closed case backs on that one, depending on the series, while this one has the non-in-house movement um, with the closed case back. And for me, uh, the in-house movement uh, to be or not to be is not a deal breaker for me. I actually prefer that they have this movement and made the case a bit slimmer. Uh, for my taste, that's perfectly fine because in my opinion, you don't really buy a Panerai because of the movement. You buy it because of the looks and because of you know, the, the whole Panerai DNA. Um, I mean, considering pros with this one is probably that the service cost will be lower than with the in-house movement and considering that they have the same power serve that's for me totally fine there is one small thing though <laughs> with this one we'll see how long it stays because while i was searching for a 42 millimeter submersible there are a couple of different ver versions now you have the 6a2 is discontinued so you have the 9a3 instead if you want the full steel look uh, you had the 6A3 with ceramic uh, insert uh, also available now. But there is the one that is the one that I would like to get my hands on. But um, we'll see if it will arrive before my vacation. And it's the same watch, but in white. And it's the 1223. So white dial panerai and when i saw it on the green rubber strap i really felt like wow this is something that i'd love to wear during the summer especially since i'm going to italy as well it just feels like the perfect summer watch so we'll see if it makes it in time before i go on vacation this one will have to make room for that one worst case scenario i'm still perfectly fine with this one it looks really good in my opinion uh, it wears comfortably on my wrist. Uh, it's just a nice looking die watch and uh, with a lot of Panerai in a smaller case, for me, it's, it's a great fit, I believe. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think about this model, which one is your favorite Panerai. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.